I actually bought the Apple Mac Pro. This isn't clickbait. I legit bought it for real and plan on keeping it. To be clear, I'm not making this video or sharing that the flex. I really hate that and I find it really tacky, but I've seen and received so many hot takes, comments, and crazy headlines about the Mac Pro that just lack an objective thought, research, or understanding. I had to explain why someone, including even a content creator like me, would even consider buying a Mac Pro. And no, I'm not some Apple fanboy. I use Android for my main phone. I have no brand loyalty and I pick what is best at the time for my needs. So I'm gonna share with you what configuration I ordered, what my plans are, what the objections and opinions people have about the Mac Pro, and even why it's objectively a good deal. As usual for most of my videos, I'm forming an argument. So hear me out first and then let's have a discussion. That's what this channel is about because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored in part by Privacy.com, a free service that is perfect for online holiday spending and more. It allows you to quickly and easily create virtual credit cards so you don't have to use your actual one and it protects your identity and bank information. Find out more by going to Privacy.com slash this is tech today and get $5 free to use on your first purchase with Privacy.com. If you like thoughtful YouTube videos, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. I have more Mac Pro videos on the way. If you decide to pick up the Mac Pro, seriously, please consider using the link in the description as that would massively help support the channel through affiliate income and you'll likely find a better deal there than on the Apple website. So what configuration did I go with? I actually ordered the wrong model at first and had to modify it afterwards. I initially went with the base model with an upgrade to the Radeon Pro Vega 2 and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Jonathan Morrison suggested that 16 cores for content creators is great and even video producers from The Verge picked the 16 core model. So I initially chose this version because I plan to upgrade everything else. Apple support documents tell you how to upgrade the RAM, add PCIe cards, and whatnot. But with the SSD, it tells you you have to contact Apple. When iFixit took theirs apart, they confirmed that the SSD was proprietary. Well, one thing unique to modern Apple computers is the T2 chip, which is more than just a security chip, which we'll talk about later. But it is true that it is in part a security chip that the main SSD controller is connected to and it is used to encrypt your data. Now, because of all this, I contacted Apple to swap out my original order with an upgraded 4 terabyte SSD for the main storage instead. All that to say, if you need more space in the primary storage slot and don't want to take up a PC PCIe slot then upgrade it from the start. So Quinn from Snazzy Labs checked out the memory and found out that the RAM was the base level PC4 23400 Micron ECC memory. While it may be the cheapest tier of RAM from them, it's important to remember that there are only a few RAM memory providers. There's Hynix, Samsung, and Micron, and they're all very high quality, even at the lowest tier. The main takeaway that we should have from this is that you can get some very inexpensive RAM to upgrade your Mac Pro and save a ton of money doing so. I calculated with the most I'll likely upgrade to, which is 192 gigabytes of RAM, and that'll cost about $720 if I bought it all right now, which would save you about $2,280 compared to buying it from Apple. You can also sell the 32 gigabytes of RAM already included in the Mac Pro, which someone will probably pay more than it should cost because it's black and Apple-y. <laughs> I also plan on getting the Afterburner card once I feel like I reach a point where I'm losing headroom while editing in Final Cut Pro X. Tests from Jonathan Morrison have shown that even an 8-core Mac Pro with the base graphics can give you a ridiculous amount of headroom in Final Cut Pro X when you add the Afterburner card. And if I need to upgrade even more after the Afterburner card, I can get another Vega 2 card or whatever video card makes sense at the time. I hope this lasts me 6 years if not more, which leads me to the many objections to Mac Pro. While I can't disagree with the base price being expensive for what you're getting, anyone who is buying the base model and not intending on making any upgrades is probably buying for the wrong reasons. I imagine this is a small percentage as most will be choosing or installing upgrades specific to their needs and we know we're buying into an ecosystem of Mac Pro with easy upgrades and expansion. Now here, here's the best way to think about the Mac Pro. The base model is something to build on. A sound engineer has no need for a Vega 2 card and would get on just fine with a 580X card. Forcing higher specs on someone is like saying they can only get an ice cream sundae with all the toppings available and they have to pay for it. The base model Mac Pro is like a vanilla ice cream. It's a base that you are then able to choose the toppings you want and need to your tastes and your needs and then you only pay extra for what you actually choose. Does that make sense? As for context, in many production houses they run off of network storage, but that also means that most of them don't need more than 256 gigabytes of storage because they're only storing their system OS and programs on it. To force a production company to have more storage than they would need would be quite wasteful. And even if they're not 
not using network storage, they still separate their system storage and project storage. That's just kind of like a standard. Now those clickbait titles about it costing more than a Cybertruck are kind of ridiculous. For the most video creators, they'll probably purchase a model between ten dollars to $20,000 in price. So no, I can't buy a Tesla with the amount that I spent on my Mac Pro. After upgrades that I make, should I need it, I could buy maybe a Chevy Spark at most. And yes, that's still a lot of money. And I recognize how fortunate I am. I'm really thankful for it, but I also saved up for six months in order to do so. As I mentioned on Twitter, which you can follow me at This Is Tech Today, it's super easy to hate on Apple. There's a double standard from the PC side of things because someone arguing from the PC side would obviously say, of course, you can get the price at high when you add every single thing possible and the kitchen sink. But I don't need all of that. I need some of that and the flexibility long term. At the end of the day, let people buy what they want and you can worry about what you spend your money on. Plus, the Mac Pro is actually a good deal. More on that later. Having the power of the Mac Pro means that there's a ton of headroom, which means that I can just focus on creating without hitting or worrying about any bottlenecks. For so long with a computer I've been using for four years, I've avoided doing certain things purely because my computer couldn't handle it. With the Mac Pro, I wouldn't have to worry about that anymore and I won't have to wait hours and hours to do all the transcoding and processing. With this old laptop, I would have to get dinner, do my laundry, take a nap, and a bunch of other different things whenever I had to import my footage. Oftentimes I need to do something way faster than that, otherwise I'm staying up until 4am or later while working on videos, and that's just not healthy. For someone like me who has a full-time job, a part-time job, handles investments, and runs a YouTube business, 30 or 40 minutes or more saved is a lot of time for me. I severely need more sleep. Now a little bit of inside baseball. As a content creator, you hear all the opinions and realize that many people think their needs are your needs and find that all these opinions don't even agree with each other. It's too powerful. Don't buy it. It's not powerful enough. Don't buy it. That's always interesting. <laughs> Would I like an AMD Ryzen system? Totally. But I can always wait for what will come and will likely always wait for the next big thing in tech or I could choose what's available right now. I don't want to build my own computer. This is a business machine, not something you're using for Fortnite or anything. I don't have time to figure out parts, compatibility, troubleshooting, and tinkering. Also building a PC means it doesn't run Mac OS X, which is a specific platform I need for what I'm trying to do. That doesn't mean I'm interested in building a Hackintosh. For production machines and machines primarily used to generate income, the last thing you want to worry about is compatibility and the need to mess with updates. This isn't a pet project. It's strictly used to generate income. I want something that gets out of my way and lets me do what I need to do without me ever, ever having to think about or worry about it. And a Hackintosh won't give me that no matter how simple and streamlined has gotten over the years. Of all the groups that could build a Hackintosh, a video editor is definitely not the right fit because of the T2 chip and how it works with every other optimization for video. The other benefits of a Mac Pro are the after sale support and the fact that the Mac Pro ecosystem System, so to speak, has fewer variables. I only have to worry about what works on one motherboard with one suite of CPUs and one type of case. That actually makes it easier to find support documents and information from other people with Mac Pros. With a custom built PC, there are tons of variables, which means you're likely out of luck at easily finding solutions to any issues you may have. This standardization also makes figuring out compatibility for any sort of add-ons that much easier. For me, I'm not moving away from Final Cut Pro X because it's just faster for me to add it on and it exports super fast. That is particularly important when I have contractual deadlines when I have sponsors and need to get a video out right away. And those sponsors are how I can keep making videos like this for you for free. And Adobe Premiere would have me waiting for exports and I would have definitely missed some deadlines if I wasn't using Final Cut Pro X. Plus, the amount of time learning a completely new system is a lot to ask, especially when it's a significant part of or primary source of income for someone. And we also can't forget how often we hear about Premiere crashing on people. Final Cut Pro X is specifically optimized for the Mac and Mac hardware, including that T2 chip. So the combination of the T2 chip, metal, and cards like the Afterburner card show that you don't really need every single core out there, and you don't even really need a fully decked out GPU configuration. A single Vega 2 is probably more than enough for a long time with an Afterburner card. If you want to see what I mean, there's a link to Jonathan's video up here. The key with everything that I'm saying is the value that is being provided over specs and cores. Being on the platform for my work, with the programs I need, with the optimization and integration I would benefit from, is incredibly value in real world use rather than benchmark test. I would 100% pay more for that creative freedom and lack of maintenance and stress. The biggest hurdle and frustration for me when I make videos is editing bottlenecks and issues. So I'm going to say it, the Mac Pro is actually a good deal. I know some of you may want to run to the comments to disagree with me, but hear me out. The Mac Pro is actually a good deal because most won't buy the base model, but will spec it out to around the $10,000 plus range. Once you cross over that price range, it is nearly equal in price to other comparable workstation configurations from HP, Dell, and others. The 
more you upgrade it from there, the better it becomes compared to comparable workstations. On top of that, you get 10 gigabit ethernet on the Mac Pro, additional Thunderbolt 3 IO ports when you add MPX modules, and arguably a much more attractive, durable, and higher quality case. To show you how much cheaper and better the Mac Pro is compared to an HP workstation equivalent, let's look at a high mid-tier spec. When I look at the HP Z8 G4 workstation, I added the following. An Intel Xenon Platinum 8280 processor that turbo boosts up to 4 gigahertz, which is lower than Apple's 4.4 gigahertz turbo boost. I upgraded the chassis to have the 1450 watt power supply, which is just a touch better than the Mac Pro power supply. The HP maxes out at 384 gigabytes of RAM, which is honestly the most that even Apple uses for all of their tests. We have a single 2 terabyte M.2 drive because it only goes up to 2 terabytes, and I have to add a second 2 terabyte SSD over SATA since HP requires storage in that slot. I would have preferred to have all M.2. And then I added two NVIDIA Quadro TRX 6000s, which have 24 gigabytes of memory compared to the Mac Pro's 32 gigabytes of memory. I then added a dual port 10 gigabit ethernet module to match the Mac Pro, and then some upgraded IO to at least have some USB type C, and then kept the standard level keyboard and mouse, which are both wired compared to the wireless options you get with the Mac Pro. Without adding anything else to the HP configuration, it comes out to $50,341 normally, and on sale for $40,272.80 before taxes. The Mac Pro with better specs overall and more premium case keyboard and mouse and support you can get at a local Apple store comes out to $25,599 before tax. That means that the Mac Pro is at least a whopping $14,673 cheaper than the PC equivalent. You could buy the Mac Pro I bought and then some with the amount saved by going with the Mac Pro over that PC equivalent. If you want to find out way more of the configuration options are available and why the Mac Pro is actually really well priced, you should check out this great video from Max Tech. So why in the world would I buy a Mac Pro if I'm primarily making videos for YouTube? A few people have sarcastically said that I'll upgrade the Mac Pro in two or three years like every other tech YouTuber. The reality is I've been using my 15 inch MacBook Pro since late 2015 and didn't upgrade until the 2016 came out. I'm extremely frugal and will only spend money when it really counts. My goal for the Mac Pro is to have it grow with me and last at least six years if not longer. There are people I know that are using the same Mac Pro for the past 12 years. Many people have said that I should get a MacBook Pro or an iMac Pro instead. The reality is I need both a travel device and a desktop device. I already have a MacBook Pro and yes, it is a phenomenal and powerful device. The 16 inch model is really great, but I plan to hire some help in the next year. So I'll need two computers anyways. With that said, this is also a business expense and a tax write off. The income that is generated by even buying the device and making videos like this will help pay it off. It will also help generate income by making videos about other products. Additionally, purchasing a MacBook Pro or iMac Pro means that I'm stuck with whatever I purchase at the time. If I grow out of the specs in those devices, I have to sell the whole thing, the whole computer. Instead of just replacing a processor or adding a GPU, an afterburner card or something like that, a whole new computer needs to be purchased and the old one sold and eventually disposed of. That's not only bad for the environment, but also way more expensive for me the moment I have to buy a second iMac Pro. If I'm using two computers for my business, Business, having to 2x that is even worse. And we can't dismiss the hassle of having to transfer all of your stuff from one computer to the other, especially with software licenses, video, motion graphic assets, and so on. Also, I can resell the old parts in the Mac Pro when I upgrade any of the individual components. A reality that cannot be denied is how an Apple product retains their value far better than a PC hardware. Of course, that same logic of depreciation can be applied to selling an entire iMac Pro or a MacBook Pro, but I lose out on the flexibility long term and at a much higher entry cost for each upgrade. So all that to say, it saves me money over the long term while giving me the flexibility, consistency, and ease to grow with me and not create as much e-waste. It generates income for me immediately and long term. It saves me time, gives me tons of headroom to do whatever I can think of and specifically optimize for my specific needs. Oh, and it's a tax write-off. It's a no-brainer for me, which is why I saved up for, for half a year and chose to not buy an iMac Pro or anything else to hold me over until the Mac Pro arrived. At the end of the day, each person needs to count the cost and make the choice that makes the most sense for them and their needs. It's unfair to say someone is making an ill-informed, mindless, and stupid choice to buy a Mac Pro. Most people who buy this have thought about the finances carefully and it makes financial sense for them. And you know what makes financial sense for everyone? Using this great free service from privacy.com that protects your financial information and your personal information. With the holidays and the new year here and all the travel many of you are going on, you're likely making way more purchases online than you normally do. As someone 
someone who used to work in credit card fraud prevention at one of the major US banks, I can tell you that it's crazy easy for your credit card information to get stolen. Privacy.com gives you the ability to quickly and easily create a virtual credit card which protects you for free from all those website hacks and breaches that seem to happen all the time. They also just launched their new paid premium pro and team tiers that give you 1% cash back on all of your purchases when you pay with privacy, give you added security and privacy features, and the ability to create even more virtual cards than the free tier. There's tons of great information about those tiers on their website. You can even set it up to work for a one-time set amount or a certain amount every month, which is great for subscriptions and promotional trials. I never have to worry about accidentally paying for an extra month or having to deal with some super obnoxious and complex cancellation process. I use privacy all the time to protect myself, and I love getting a good deal, and privacy.com is going to give you a great deal by giving you $5 off free on your first purchase with privacy.com. All you have to do is go to privacy.com slash this is tech today and sign up. It's literally free money. You can even use that $5 for free to plant some trees with Mr. Beast, Linus Tech Tips, Mark Robert, Elon Musk, and so many other great creators by going to teamtrees.org or using that fundraiser bar that's somewhere below or around this video. Enough has already been raised to plant over 20 million trees and we can reach even a higher amount before the end of the year. We gotta make a difference to take care of our planet and you can do that by helping plant some trees or even reducing your e-waste. And what do you think about the Mac Pro? Now that you know why I would buy something like this and why someone else would, does it make sense that this is a fantastic choice for a specific group of people? Can you understand why the Mac Pro has a great price now that you look at it in context and the value it adds to those who generate income with it? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And let me know of any questions, tests, or anything else you'd like to know about the Mac Pro. I should have it here real soon. And please join the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and all things creative. Until next time, and hopefully I'll feel better. Bye!